What's up, fish tank people? Dustin's Fish Tanks bringing it to you, talking about the red arowana. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. So in last Sunday's video, I discussed how certain fish and plants are either illegal or invasive in the United States. Your all's comments in that video were absolutely fantastic, and I hope I can get some great comments from you all in the comments of today's video when I talk about just one of the fish from last Sunday's video. That one and only fish is the red arowana. The image you see as the thumbnail of this video was borrowed with permission from our friends at the Fish Gallery down in Houston. They have a bunch of epic pet stores that I hope to go down to one day. This image was posted up on my Instagram page and the comments in the comments section of the Instagram post were absolutely fantastic, including one of the most fabulous stoner comments I've ever heard in my entire life, which I will reveal at the end of this video. And if you're not following us on Instagram, go ahead and follow us at Dustin's Fish Tanks on Instagram. My man Andrew behind the camera has done a fantastic job of putting a bunch of great content up there, as well as your fish tanks and images that you send to us, email editor at dustinsfishtanks.com to be featured on there. I love seeing your all's tanks. So for today's video, I want to dig a little bit deeper into the red arowana and why it is illegal. I'm fortunate enough to be in the biz and know knowledgeable people in the biz who can give me some super information straight from the source. Later on in this video, I will share an absolutely fantastic conversation that I had with our friend Dave down at Seagrass. You might remember Dave, he did the check import unboxing. Dave is actually the import buyer from Seagrass Farms and is the guy to talk to regarding bringing fish into the United States. But more on him in a minute. But first, let's take a quick step back and talk about why the red arowana is even worth talking about in the first place. Let there be no doubt, let there be no question. The arowana itself has an absolute wonderful allure as any fish. The Asian arowana, also known as the dragonfish, is believed by the Chinese to bring good luck and prosperity due to its red color and coin-like scales. Its upturned mouth is sweet and its coiling attack style is fantastic. And yes, I have sat in a room with Blaze College frat guys and watched a silver arowana eat a mouse on multiple occasions. And if you've ever kept an arowana of any kind, any of the species in that genus, please drop me a comment. I personally have never kept an arowana, but I do have a 350 gallon aquarium in that garage right there that might make a great centerpiece fish in Greenhouse 2.0. So the silvers get too big, the jarginis get too mean, but the reds are just right, staying small, getting about two to three feet long. Frankly, a two or three foot long red arowana would look pretty killer in the 350 as the main fish that greets you when you're walking into Greenhouse 2.0. Oh, by the way, I'm still in a wonderful holding pattern with the state of Kentucky's planning and zoning, trying to get my six hydrants and two inch water main approved. Patience, baby, patience. Yes, Dusty has his sights on an arowana. Okay, I want to take a quick step back and clarify something that I kind of mistakenly did in last Sunday's video. I lumped the red arowana in a video with both illegal and invasive fish, okay? The red arowana is illegal in the United States, but it is certainly, in my humble opinion, not going to be an invasive species, okay? I don't believe arowanas of any kind are going to be taking over any waterways in the United States, even Florida where invasive species run rampant. However, thanks to some of your wonderful comments, on that video on Sunday, and I hope you can give me some comments below on how you feel about this topic. I actually watched a video about the Asian carp and how close that invasive species is to getting into my beloved Great Lakes. Please folks, click the link in the comments below and watch the video that Vice put out about the Asian carp and how it's slowly working its way towards the Great Lakes. That, my friends, is a serious concern, and you will be getting the Dustin version of the Asian carp problem here in a video coming up. With that said, you should never release your unwanted fish of any kind from your aquarium into a natural body of water. And you can click the links around here and see how some of the fish with the worst lives ever end up in zoos. 
Now let's talk about my conversation with Dave down at Seagrass about the red arowana and why it's not allowed in the United States and some of the problems with that. So yesterday I got a call back from a man Dave down at Seagrass. I want to give a little backstory on Dave at Seagrass because I think it's important to know both what Seagrass is doing and what Dave is doing for this great hobby. If you're not familiar with Seagrass, where the heck have you been? Seagrass Farms brings in over a million fish a week. A million fish a week Seagrass brings in. Dave is the head of importing at Seagrist Farms, okay? Let me take a step back and tell you a little bit more about Dave. I met Dave at about a 22 fish unboxing with fish imported from the Czech Republic. You can click the links around here and see long fin neons as just one of the many fish, including a bunch of crazy apistos. That link will be around here somewhere. You can check that out. Dave actually left a well-paying job in sales with Seagrass to move into the import side because he wanted to have a greater impact on the hobby. Did I mention I like Dave? Dave's a good dude. I got my notes from Dave right here because I don't want to misquote my man. So here's the deal. The Formosa arowana is a Cites one, is a Cites appendix one fish, okay? CITES is a worldwide organization, unlike U.S. Fish and Wildlife, which is obviously U.S. CITES is a worldwide organization. Appendix 1 means they are most, the most endangered fish, and you cannot get them for like a zoo. Just to put some perspective on how these CITES appendixes work, an Appendix 1 fish is an endangered fish. You can't get it even if you're a zoo. Uh, it's just not allowed to go around. A CITES Appendix 3 fish would be a fish that's not endangered in the wild, but is still highly regulated. Uh, a Motoro stingray would be a good example of this. You'd have to get a permit to go and export 100 Motoro stingrays. I want to make a quick note about permits. I know what it's like to get permits to bring plants into the United States. I can't imagine what it's like to get a Motoro stingray permit in Colombia. I'm having a hard time in the U.S. I can't imagine what it's like to get a permit to export 100 Motoro stingrays out of Colombia. You imagine how many people you got to pay off? So that's kind of a rough idea of how the CITES works. Now here's the rub that gets me, and I'd love your feedback in the comments on how this is going down. Okay, we've established the red arowana is an endangered species in the wild. Okay, in the wild, the red arowana is an endangered species. And Dave pointed out, and he was brilliant when he said this, he goes, you know, the red arowana is endangered in the wild, but it's endangered in the wild not from being over-collected and put into the aquarium hobby. It's endangered in the wild because like most fish that are endangered in the wild, it's endangered in the wild because of habitat destruction. You could see a similar thing going on with Bucephalandra. There's no question that the plant Bucephalandra is being over-collected. However, it is habitat destruction with, I believe, it's peanut oil that is actually killing where the Bucephalandra comes more than the collection. It still shouldn't be wildly collected, but nevertheless, Boosa Flanders habitat is being destroyed as well. Same thing with the red arowana. The wild arowana is endangered because of habitat destruction. Now, here comes the funky part. The fish is endangered in the wild, but the wild caught specimen are not desired in the aquarium hobby. Why is this? A wild caught red arowana. If you are a red arowana and you live in the wild and you are bright red, you are a target. So natural selection is going to take its place because you are a big red fish. They are also the top of the food chain, okay? But regardless, if a predator were to see a red arowana versus a more natural colored arowana, the red arowana has less of a shot. Okay, so here's the rub. Here's the interesting part for me, and I would love to get your comments on this in the comment section. Obviously, I would assume we're all in agreement that it would not be a good idea to allow the collection of wild red arowanas out of the wild and importing them all over. I think we're all in agreement on that. However, here's the interesting part. These fish, the red arowana, have been kept in captivity and bred in captivity to have a better red color and are actually a more desirable fish than their wild caught counterparts, okay? So they've been breeding these fish and inbreeding these fish or whatever, and they're making a super red arowana. The price has come down on this fish, and people in the hobby, myself included, would want a red arowana that's been bred in captivity. It's probably hardier, probably adapts to better food. It's just gonna be a better fish and a better color fish. And I'd like to get your opinion on this. Should those captive bred red arowana be allowed to be imported into the United States. Obviously our neighbors to the north and my Canadian beefcake brother Joey has a couple of the red arowanas, but they're not 
legalized here in the United States yet, and the U.S. could make money on the importation of this fish. So I'd love to get your feedback on this. Why do you feel about the red arowana not being legalized in the United States? Maybe you're keeping arowanas right now and you love them. Maybe you've kept arowanas in the past and you've got some experience you could drop in the comments. Or maybe you just want to tell me how you would keep an arowana. And in conclusion of this video, I'd like to point out the most stoner comment I've ever heard in my entire life. I read this on Instagram. Go follow us, Dustin's Fish Tanks, at Dustin's Fish Tanks on Instagram. And it goes like this. I was discussing the thoughts of keeping an arowana in Greenhouse 2.0. And someone so brilliantly lifted their head above a bong and said this, and I quote, Dustin, man, you ever heard of aquaponics? Bro, if you did aquaponics, bro, you could have an arowana growing marijuana. Hit the like button, subscribe button, and share button, everybody, and tank on. Later.